Everything. So both of you say something. Hi. Hello. Can you both say something more than just one sentence? Just more than one word, please? <laughs> Ice cream is good, I guess. Depends on the flavor. It's not always good. Some of it's really shitty. So here we go with Zen. Always has to be the guy that does the <laughs> shit. <laughs>sounds like to me d3 that you should get good and hello everyone and welcome to another episode of to be released <laughs> <laughs> i'm here with zedrot hi and i'm here with d3 yo our special guest for today uh joining us for a brand new format change how, how you been d3 it's been like years since anyone heard six, from you on here yeah six thousand years bro i've been good you everybody everybody good yeah don't care good. about zen but yeah, I'll ask about you. <laughs> don't. Just, <laughs> if you want to know how Zen's doing, follow him on his streams. We're doing good. We're back trying to talk about <laughs> Dokkan. Oh man! And we figure who best to talk to Dokkan than the one guy who, whenever I say uh, a unit is something, something I go, "Well, D Free said this, so I'm just gonna believe him <laughs> on this." <laughs> oh, man. All right, happy to be here though. Thank you for joining us, and. Because you're joining us, we've decided to put up a very special uh, big boy, put two very special units up on the big boy scale. We will be talking about the um, the <laughs> awakening for tech Krillin, the free to play oh. Bobby unit, <laughs> and the other one will be uh, Hit, the brand new global unit that we have for two weeks now. <laughs> been talking basically trash on. <laughs> So he's going to get a big boy revision, is that? Yeah, we're going to get, now that someone actually knows something about Hit, because both of us, even though he's translated in English, we both did not bother to look up what he did. <laughs> the level of disrespect. <laughs> How are you going to say you've been talking about him for weeks and so you're not even sure what he does? I'm not sure what he does. I, know I just that found out that he was tech the other day. <laughs> I, I just found out an hour ago when I looked up to see what he had. <laughs> oh I, I also God. found out he does share a link with uh with krillin so that already puts him on a pretty good standing as far as i can tell oh yeah sharing typing too yeah perfect yeah put him <laughs> on the same team so let me get into it let me quickly explain for anyone who doesn't know the baba krillin is the super tech krillin he is one of what is it two is there two um tur krillins it's him and the the str one he, well he's not a tur i think that was just a ur I think he's the only TUR in the game, actually. That is Krillin, really? That can't yeah. be true. I'm I think pretty sure the others are. Hang on, I'm looking. Oh wait, I'm, I'm on. Oh wait, no, I am on JPN. Okay, hang on, I'm Hold checking. On. I don't see I, any of that. I beat you to it. He is the only TUR. It's, it's pretty barren in here for Krillins. He is the only TUR. There's another Baba Shop STR one, but he's only SSR. No awakening yet. Okay, how did Krillin beat? Yamcha got an LR before Krillin? Exactly! That's what I was saying! <laughs> I thought Krillin had at least like a good number of TURs to go like, oh, no. well, at least he has like different options. <laughs> no, hold on, hold on, hold on. It was, it was Yamcha and, and, uh, and Puar, Puar for a while. <laughs> Puar. And also before that, it's Tien and Chaozu. What the hell? They're saving that Krillin for you. Specifically. You know what? You know There's what? There's only two SSR Krillins? Yes, and they're both Baba Shop. There is not a there's not a single summonable Krillin that's not an SR or lower. Ah. <laughs> that's that's insane to me. That seems yeah. wrong. And the newest Krillins have been uh, added to the World Tournament um, pool. They were there was an SR for the Dragon Ball World Tournament banner, and then there's also the one from the Bio Broly movie with the hair. Oh yeah. And then that, the other newest one was the TUR one you're talking about. But there have not been any new Krillins that are summonable like in years. And that <laughs> SR Krillin has the father son uh Kamehameha, but it's more like yeah, the yeah. the sons of my friends Kamehameha. Yeah. <laughs> it's the triple Kamehameha, yeah, that's what they call it. Wow. With the, with, with the hair, man, with the hair. <laughs> so I guess the the theme of our big boys up air is just pure disrespect on Dokkan's part. <laughs> so you know what? I, I hate the tournament, and I don't bother to play it. Knowing my luck, that he's gonna be a he's gonna be a tournament LR. So and knowing, we're gonna do it, and mm, I'll yeah. be forced. To it's gonna be kid kid Krillin getting hit by Jackie Chun. That's oh, you know what? LR. I'm happy you mentioned kid Krillin there because I just remembered that um you know we had the legendary election on you know global a while ago and of course it translated to JP. Yeah. Uh, that was like over a year ago, but they've actually been slowly crossing off some of those units. Yeah. So there's actually an option on there for Krillin, Goku, and, and Master, uh, Master Roshi. Roshi. 
So yeah, that might school, be uh... yeah that that might be what this uh, current Goku is. There's this current JP Goku that's supposed to turn into an LR, but he's not there yet. Hmm. That so. was the LR I voted for because I believed in a just world. Oh, me world. too. Because that <laughs> should have been – everyone else was like, no, Super Saiyan 4 Goku. It's like we're going to get yeah. him eventually. When are we ever going to get it's, Roshi? It's definitely going to happen. When would we ever get this card? It's, I also uh, voted for the – this. I think they had the Great Sandmans on there too actually. Yeah. A lot of them. Yeah and, yeah, and the Metal Cooler core was – you know, like all that stuff. So they're, uh, they're probably- Metal Cooler <laughs> army got an LR before Krillin. <laughs> Damn it, Sin. <laughs> uh, i'm just gonna get angry now at the the idea of him being a world tournament so let's get into this krillin so his name is back of the front line <laughs> that's his title that is translated by global krillin hey. not bad uh he's attack type three key uh hp attack and defense 70 percent his uh, passive skill is tech types get plus two and then a great chance of attack and defense 30 percent. and i believe that's to everyone right yep Okay, and his... so the way his passive works is he offers two key always to tech types, and mm-hmm. then he has a great chance of offering the additional. Okay, yeah, yeah, uh, and then his link skills are, and these are some great titles. They're not in Japanese, so I can actually read them. It's best buddies, courage, experience <laughs> fighters, turtle school, rival duo, Z fighters, and shattering the limit. And that's Krillin. So just to sum it up for D for you, these units are rated out of five out of five. We, of course, look at damage, but then we also look at what the art is, everything about the unit, and then we decide inside ourselves how much they deserve to be out of five, out of five. Like, it's out of five. So hold to on, give... hold on. So what you're saying is there's a chance he's a five, just by looking at the art. There's, there's a chance. You know what? I will say this right now. The fact that they made a Krillin based off of the second Broly movie when he shows up in Krillin's clothes... Uh, Piccolo's outfit, Piccolo's yeah. Clothes. For like, like a split second, he's just there, like, oh, yeah. go. He's, Gohan's like, oh, Piccolo. He's like, nah, it's me. No, <laughs> and and the best thing about it is that they are effectively killing their running joke that they've had in every single Dragon Ball movie since Piccolo was added, which is that Piccolo shows up out of nowhere and saves Gohan. <laughs> and then when he when it happens in this movie, there's a real moment. It's like, oh, it's legit Piccolo. And then it's like, nope, it's Krillin. And they never do the joke again after that movie. The joke is dead. <laughs> oh my god, I didn't even notice that. Now that now that you mention it, I know now, but I didn't realize it before. That's hilarious. Yeah, he always does it. Like in Metal Cooler, when he shows up out of nowhere yeah, on the new no, planet, he always did it. Yeah, yeah. he always he wouldn't it. even be in the movie half the time, and he'd just show up out of thin air. <laughs> Yeah, it was the it was a great joke. So, in terms of just like the style and presentation, I like that they made that Krillin into a unit. And I think if there was any, if there's gonna be only one Tur Krillin, it's him. <laughs> because Kid Krillin would be obviously LR status, as we have already uh, mentioned before. For sure. Uh, in terms of everything else, though, I think. His passive skill, I know back in the day it was a little bit more like, oh, this is actually pretty good for a free-to-play unit, but I just don't know how that stacks to, like, modern day anymore. Yeah, well, the thing about that type of passive skill is uh, it, it's definitely better in, in the mono team setup, which, mm-hmm. unfortunately, we haven't been in that for, like, almost a year now, unless you actively go out of your way way to run uh, if you run him on anything else which he doesn't even have categories anyway so like if you were to run him on anything else that's movie heroes <laughs> i guess so like uh-huh. maybe <laughs> but if you were to run him anywhere he's not really for the most part so yeah definitely not his his best asset actually is his leader skill because he enables uh the free-to-play versions of like a tech team 70 percent in conjunction with the friend that's 120 is, is good enough to take on like super battle road for example yeah, I, th- I think his leader skill is definitely, like, for a free-to-play unit, if your luck is, like, so bad that you would literally could not pull anything else, he is always, mm-hmm. like, your like your back way into, like, okay, let me just feed off all these useless SSRs and buy an actually decent one that I can use until I get better yep. stuff. Also, uh, he's, he's good against um, Battlefield because of the leader skill, too, because in Battlefield, you have to take your leader and then you have to take a sub-leader. So you effectively take your own friend leader as well. So if you go full monotech team... You can bring your monotech leader or your super tech leader like SS3 Goku, who does 120, and then you can fill out the team with tech types, and then your sub leader, his full leader skills applied unlike the world tournament. So you'd get that 70% and three key. So that's another scenario. And then that scenario in a team like that, of course, the passive would be Yes. 
I will also say, just for let the, let the people know, and the, since we've been back, this is the first mention of Battlefield <laughs> of, of a unit's <laughs> of a unit's usefulness in Battlefield. It had completely like lost my mind. <laughs> Well, see, I just equated his usefulness to the two hardest modes in the game. So that's pretty much how I, I gauge these units in general. So, mm. You know what? That reminds me. I haven't taken hit to Battlefield yet. That's a good video idea. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, look, I, say, I expect a shout out to both of us at the beginning of the, the hit video. <laughs> For sure. Watch. I'm just going to link this. We got it. <laughs> yeah, just link this original idea from a to be released. Uh <laughs> Zen, what do you feel about this Krillin? How do you how what's your current feelings on uh, him? He is butt. <laughs> it's really <laughs> bad, um, <laughs> but he has really good art just because it's stupid that they made the card where he is in the pickle outfit, <laughs> and that's his best card in the game. There is a certain so, level of uh, like we just won't, we won't take this Krillin disrespect. We we don't. I I, I like him just on the merit of that alone because he makes me laugh. I mean, he is good for that. There's so many units on here that are like a bad laugh. Where you look at like like original Super Saiyan Goku, which I totally pulled. Ugly Ku. Yeah, that one. Ugh. Who's <laughs> who was one of the first units to get a rebirth, and now needs another rebirth. <laughs> so he needs. He needed another rebirth as soon as he got his rebirth, because he was immediately the worst. Re <laughs> yes, he was. And if you remember the terrible days on the sub where people were going like no he's so much better now like you would totally run him it's like no oh my God. you wouldn't piccolo yeah, is the best car, that car was so bad piccolo yeah. was really good yeah post rebirth he's still actually kind of solid he doesn't do anything else but what is it 70 percent defense that's still always going to be relevant and yeah, as, it, as we get better units and better leader skills that's just going to get so yeah piccolo is not bad but i'm the on the you know just back on the Krillin thing, like mm -hmm. I said, he's not great, <laughs> especially no. in today's current meta. No, no. Uh, I want to point out that he has a link with that's the best buddies link, but there's only one SSR Goku in it, and it's the fucking free Spirit Bomb one. You know, from like the one year anniversary, and they never put any other ones in. <laughs> <laughs> but he's speaking the most of Goku, hold on, the game. Hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me tell you something though. Speaking of Goku, this is this is Krillin's ultimate feat. Okay. He actually shares uh, experienced fighters. He shares a uh, rival duo. And he shares... But he shares those two links, okay? With the most powerful unit in the game. The LR Goku and Frieza. How about that? And he's a tech type, so he can give the three key and the additional bonus. All right. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, yeah. I, feel, best yeah feat. I think he's definitely more versatile than your other, your average Baba Shop units. Like you probably run. <laughs> I think we could say definitively of the Baba Shop units. I think he's probably better than Nappa, Master Roshi. Was it Debora is the other one? You know what? I actually, they're weird. Those ones are actually kind of weird. Uh, but it's Debora, yeah. I actually think Roshi's kind of cool because he has over in a flash. So. <laughs> he does have over in a flash. <laughs> It's pretty cool. Yeah. Those units are nothing but trolls. <laughs> All right, let's that I think that's what we got for Krillin. How are you feeling about his out of big boys again? It's out of one. You can actually give a zero. I don't think he earns a zero. It's one out of five. Nah, I'm gonna give him a solid ten. Give him <laughs> <laughs> on the merit of being a Krillin fan, and also on the merit of being. Uh... I have, of appreciating that art, he deserves it. So that's that's it for me. I'm gonna give it a middle ground and give him a solid two out of five. How is that middle? <laughs> it's, that's it's literally right. below half. <laughs> you could have said I think, three, I and think that would have actually been middle. <laughs> no, I think that a solid two out of five is exactly where he should be because he's also he's not very tall, and this is a big boy oh, scale. He's very God. short. <laughs> and he's really bad. <laughs> and even though he has hair, it's not green. So I'm going to leave him at a solid hey, 2 out of 5. We don't talk about Quillen's hair that way. <laughs> that is a national treasure. And I'll, and I'll also say just I just love his art, and I love the fact that it is a callback. I'm going to give him a 3 out of 5. So Raiders fan, if you're taking all this down, all of these <laughs> rankings are <laughs> canon as far as I'm concerned. So Krillin is both two out of five, three out of five, and ten out of five on a big boy scale. <laughs> so I guess what's what's the that's what uh fifteen? 
<laughs> 15 <laughs> divided by 3, he gets a perfect 5 out of 5. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to our... Okay. That, that no, we've wait, just... wait, wait. It's, I'm sorry. It's 13, not 15. Oh, I was going to say, Because Wilbokies wow. is only a 1. So he gets a 4 out of 5 on the big boys. Oh, <laughs> Well, look at it this way. He does join the ranks of Broly, our other four out of five big boy. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's pretty good. So that that is Tech Krillin. Now we're going to move on to the other unit, everyone's favorite, most disrespected unit in the entire game. Hit. Boy, do people hate this unit. <laughs> I will say, I think a lot of the hate comes from the fact that Dokkan treats Hit dirty at every single release like have you ever think yeah well the thing about the thing about him is there were a few different things that were wrong with him. now on the surface everything about the unit is perfect he's a well not perfect but he's a phenomenal unit one of the best transcendent URs in the game that's just kind of how he is but what, what the the reason why a lot of people hate hit hate this card just in general is because for one uh every hit prior has been literally trash so they expected the same Second, this was a vote character, so it was between horrible choices. Him, Khalifa, and Kale, I believe, was the three. And nobody wanted a hit card because, well, obviously he won, right? So more people wanted it. But a lot of people didn't want him in the first place because they thought he would be trash like the other ones. Uh, and then also the biggest issue with a lot of people hating this card is his release. We don't hear anything about him for like four months. After they they said he won and they, they were like, oh, yeah, he'll be the next Dokkan Festival. But, I mean, like we're four months later um or, or maybe even five months later something like that it took a while uh yeah it took a while but the real reason is because we know that the movie stuff is supposed to come out on global <laughs> but instead of doing that they went this avenue and everybody's like what the hell no I, I don't want that and then on top of that it was a christmas banner it was the only christmas banner and there was nothing special about it there was no no tickets or anything it was just Oh, you get your summon and you get item. That's it. So you wanted this. Here you go. They basically yeah, so asked. They, every, they every, really. Uh, I'm sorry. That I was saying they basically asked everyone, "What do you want for Christmas?" And everyone voted for hit. And then they're like, "Okay," but they didn't tell you that what that's what you were getting for Christmas. So now here exactly. comes Christmas. They they didn't even incentivize it, so it was just horrible. It's 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 a horrible situation, and that's why everybody hates it. And then of course they know that the movie stuff is coming, and then there's also that shiny uh, step up guaranteed LR banner too. So oh yeah, especially with that coming, it's like a hit is just on a different like. And Dokkan has always been this way. I will always remember back when original and hit came out, and it was a lot of people going like, "No, stunning is okay." And then I also remember that was the episode where uh, Rhyme live pulled during the episode so that you got to hear him get really happy about uh, getting hit. And that is the only time anyone has ever been happy about pulling in hit. <laughs> Damn in hit. Always was trash. Literally trash. Terrible trash. And since then, like, he's just been on another level of just like... It's similar to like Su uh, Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken, but Hit is an actual character where the other one is a legitimate, like, is a form. And they treated, like, the form with more respect than they ever did Hit. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing uh, about Hit is he had that int variation, which is, we already talked about how he's bad. Um, and then post Awakening, I guess he's serviceable, quote unquote. Yeah. Uh, and then they, prior to the tech one that just came out, they had the World Tournament AGL Hit who is all tournament card, so he's innately going to be bad, right? Yeah. So the there's STR that. one. And then, then I was going to say, yeah, before that, too, they also had the STR one. And the STR one is – and it, this is something that they do with the hit units that actually shafts them in a lot of scenarios. They make them extreme units. So he's not relevant on a lot of the teams. You'd be forced to run an extreme STR team. Yeah, I don't get why he's hit. extreme. Oh, He's like Goku's buddy in the tournament of power. Apparently, because he's an assassin, that makes him a villain. I, but also, I guess. Vegeta's a mass murderer. Goku killed so many people exactly. in the Red Ribbon Army. Always, that's always my retort to that too. I'm like, I don't know why he's an uh, extreme unit. Oh, it's because he kills people. I mean, doesn't everybody? <laughs> maybe, maybe how many people? How many people did Vegeta kill? <laughs> exactly, and most of his units are super type. So like, okay. you, know, you know what it is? It's totally because it's his job. It's like one of those people who are like, oh man, why do you have to get paid for the hard work you do? <laughs> like it. <laughs> Why can't you just kill for the for the for, spirit and the art? 
Vegeta did it because he was having a midlife crisis. You're doing it for some sick money. What is this? <laughs> You've got no soul. But I just oh, want to point man. out that uh, Beerus is a super person, and his job is literally to destroy entire planets. And, you you and want to know something funny about the time? You want to know something funny about the Beerus? Is freaking Chomp is an extreme type. <laughs> He has the same job. He has the same job, and he's like way less douchey than his brother. Champa's like vaguely polite most of the time. You know what he does? Champa's just a troll. <laughs> they do it because Champa's fat. That's the real reason. It's always been a disrespectful lair. You ain't slick, Dogon. Oh, anyway, so, let's. Yeah. Yeah, that's the bat. That's that's the preamble to Hit. Let's actually get into what Hit does. Hit's name is Assassin's Ultimate Technique. This is the uh, TUR version. His leader skill is Universe Six Category Three Key HP Attack and Defense One Hundred Seventy Percent, or Universal Survival Saga Three Key a Attack HP and Defense One Hundred Fifty Percent. And then his passive skill is called Wipe Out the Target, and it's attacked enemy. Okay. Attacked enemies' attack is 20% less and defense is 80% less for two turns. High chance to stun the attacked enemy for one turn. Attack 120% when performing a super attack, plus an additional attack 80%, and attack effective against all types when the target enemy is stunned. And then his link skills are Experience Fighter, Cold Judgment, In Fighter, Shocking Speed, Fierce Battle, Warriors of Universe 6, and Tournament of Power. And that is Hit in a nutshell. Yeah. So, Hit's biggest value, though, is being Jiren, but not being Jiren. What I mean by that is he has Jiren's literal leader skill, 3 key, 150% of the Universe Survival Saga, but also having a whole other category in it. The first ever dual category leader. And hit there's global. not, like I said, there's not any sort of, uh, yeah, it hit global first. And it's like there's, it's not like there's any sort of discrepancy to where you would still want to run Jiren as your leader. Hit's just better at it because he has another category. And now there's a whole lot of bleed over, but Hit will be getting the 170, and then you can run the whole bunch of 150s on your team as well. Hmm. Yeah. And then he also has something similar to Jiren, actually, because Jiren also stuns, but Hit actually hurts stunned enemies. So th it's good you mentioned that because the next best thing about Hit is that he can run Jiren on his team. They are... An incredible rotation. They share a lot of links. They share shocking speed. They share tournament of power. They share fierce battle. They share in fighter. I believe they also share cold judgment and or uh, experienced fighters as well. Uh, they do share cold judgment. They do not share experienced fighters. So they share almost every link pretty much. Hmm. And the way that they work is hit has two separate stun chances. He has a medium chance to stun on his super attack. And then his passive has a chance to stun too. So, um, if you have a situation where you have Jiren, Jiren at the start of the turn has a chance to stun all enemies. So if the enemy can be stunned, which is the hugest caveat now because they take that off of bosses in a lot of scenarios. Uh, but if they can be stunned, you have a situation where uh, you could start off by either stunning them with Jiren's passive or with one of the two chances that Hit has. Now, if it's with Jiren's passive, they both can kind of utilize that. So Hit's first attack would get the additional 80% for a total of 200% and the Gogeta mechanic of super effective against all enemies. Mm -hmm. And then Jiren would get the guaranteed crit. So if not, though, um, Hit can still stun and or additional after that. If he stuns on the first attack, he could still utilize the additional part of his passive by using the additional from the potential system uh, if it's a super <laughs> attack. <clears throat> and then on top of that, if he stuns, Jiren can still get the guaranteed crit. So like they're like a, a match made in heaven type of rotation. So it's like a good it's good, good buddy to have. They're good uh, yeah. link buddies. They're good link buddies, and they they feed into each other's mechanics entirely. Hmm. And they also are on the same team with no sort of drop off because a lot of times you'll uh, a main leader skill and a sub leader skill will be like way worse or whatever. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think on paper his passive like literally that was my first time reading his passive and i was kind of reading it going i can't believe that this guy does this much <laughs> this seems like a lot for hit yeah no hit is hits really good the only thing he doesn't have in his passive is defense but he kind of makes up for it by reducing the attack if it can be reduced because bosses take that off too yeah so that's kind so of like, the thing where stuff starts to go is that a lot of the stuff that he does i feel the reason why he has so many stuff on there is that a is lot of bosses you can't always do it exactly yeah. like i and i think someone brought it up because we were just talking about how stunning seems kind of useless but there are still some modes like what is a super battle road you can still stun people yep. so super battle road is one of the best places to go because like for example 
in a theoretical universe six slash universe survival saga type super battle road those neither of those two teams have a category super battle road stage you could take that aforementioned rotation and you have a situation where jiren can at the start of the turn stun like five enemies and they can both just eat off of that Hmm. so like in in modes like super battle road and specific boss fights not all of them turn off your attack debuffs defense debuffs or stuns so like it's situational but that's why he does so many things just because of that so like from from testing with him right this is just comparison sake he um if he's able to get his second part of his passive and on his own team and with the Champa on rotation, because Champa actually awakens now, physical Champa finally. Um, three key forty percent support as well. So he's really good. So that type of stuff on rotation hits attack values, get among the highest in the game for transcend URs as well. I mean, like he gets over three million and stuff like that. That's really high. So he's very good. So it just depends. He's just situational, he's gimmicky. Mm. Yeah, but he's... at the base, though, if he doesn't get anything else, he'll still get 120, I guess. So, <laughs> yeah, it's still the bare minimum. Zen, I'll let you kind of go in there now. What do you, What are your feelings okay. on Hit? So he seems like he's got some good, some good stuff going on. He's got a pretty good ish leader skill, um, just because the Universe Survival Saga stuff more than the Universe Six guys. But mm-hmm. whatever, links are pretty good. But uh, I didn't once hear either of you defend the fact that he has a battle kilt. That he fights in <laughs> and takes off later. I didn't hear anybody defend that. And oh, his head man. looks a lot like a dick, and it looks a lot like a dick in the awakened art. Like they didn't. They made it's really bad. Also, like it's, worse than you. You know what? Uh, there is a lot of like. I totally forgot imagery. we all. Too. Oh my. Oh, God. oh yeah, the alt. <laughs> the alt is also. To also, be... he wears knee no, pads. No, the art. Yeah. So yeah. why is he wearing knee pads? His, and his, his six-pack like six goes see all that the way now. up to directly under his pecs. There's like no, there's no other muscle on his body. It's all he's got. Oh, you know what? I, I, also... I literally can't unsee the dickhead now. So here's the it, thing. I'm telling you, it's bad. His his head looks <laughs> like the dick, but then Zed, the... this is my favorite unit in the game, <laughs> and you're gonna do that. <laughs> but also, if this you... is literally my favorite unit. Not Kojita Blue. Not Broly. Hit, and you just now every time I use him, I'm gonna picture a dick. It's really, really even by comparison to how bad his head normally looks. This one is really bad. Oh, my. I will also say that the yellow thing at the bottom with his like weird uh, abs thing does kind of look like he has like a like a weird bulgy yellow dick popping out from below. <laughs> a little <laughs> tiny dick pouch. <laughs> yeah, that's what it kind of looks like. Oh, my I mean, art wise, he's that's not what he's here for. I will say, I do think it's funny that his alt animation feels like the guy who was in charge of the LR Gohan walking animation it has been building up <laughs> to this moment. He's like, No, they disrespected my walk animation. I'm gonna show these motherfuckers that I can do a walk animation. Oh, man. Speaking of walk animations, have you guys seen the super attack for this card? Uh, yes, I did. That's where I remember seeing I, the walk I, animation. I on, on, went on Twitter when it came out. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, like I remember I feel, everyone going, "Wow, that's just the fighters one." So yeah, it's just they've actually been quietly using a lot of fighter uh, stuff. I mean, it looks good, but they've just been stealing it. Um, but I will say this: mm-hmm. I feel really bad for Gohan because <laughs> every card now has <laughs> a fire super attack, and he's just stuck with that horrendous that walk. trash super. <laughs> that's <laughs> it's just walking is so bad. They have cards that run. Like, did you see the Gogeta one? Like, it's just they have cards that run. Yes. The Gohan is just stuck with the moving still image <laughs> up and down. <laughs> it's just going up and down. It has the, the best thing in that animation is the, the Vegeta that shows up and just tosses the something. Vegeta, yeah. <laughs> he hits him with the, the Q. Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, when LR, LR Gohan also suffers from being one of the first LRs. Uh, that he was, was the first. In, yeah, he was the first LR. In, at in least on JP. Yeah, in the banner. Because I remember... Uh, technically lr goku and all those others i'm talking about I mean, actual yeah, yeah the first summon yeah if you were to took look at the problems of what happened to dokkan eventually it would probably start with lr gohan being in that banner with his one percent ass rates <laughs> i don't know man i told people then and, and it's finally coming to fruition but if you hear about now, uh well don't worry about it just keep playing because you'll get them later and it's coming to fruition now because there's so damn many and that's what's just going to happen as they like have like what like I think they have like fourteen or something like that. Jeez. They're hella common now. Yeah. So there's so many LRs. So I don't know. There's so many LRs, and yet all I can pull is fucking LR Bulljack. 
Bojack. Ball Jack. Ball Jack. Sorry, I got. I was looking at Hit, and I was just thinking, like, what would be perfect to go with? and Slip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Hit's pretty cool. Um, I... I really enjoy this unit. I'm not going to go as far as to say I think he's better than the newer ones that just came to JP, but I think he's pretty damn close. Just in comparison, he's not ever really going to get his respect until I guess maybe he comes to JP. Uh, but he is definitely one of the best cards in the game. That's just, he does too much, and he's got a really good uh, leader skill and solid link kit as well. Yeah, the so. hit is basically the Rodney Dangerfield of Dokkan. He gets no respect. And chances are, when he hits Japan, maybe he'll finally get some respect of some kind. But as far as, like, currently as, as it is in Global, he's just kind of what the unit that isn't the units that are everyone's waiting for. Yeah, that's, a, that's the problem. He's just not Gogeta. He's not Gogeta. That's, like, that's probably why, I think, <laughs> just to be consistent with it, if I was going to put him on the big boy scale, I would have to also give him a 4 out of 5, because Gogeta is currently the only 5 out of 5 big boy. <laughs> <laughs> and I cannot. Nah, ig- nah. Curling averaged out. We just talked about this. Oh yeah, no, four, four point three out of five. Oh That's my. Four, four, four point five. Four point three. Four point three out of big boy. Four point nine. Damn it! So close. Someone's gonna do the legit math on that, and then we're gonna figure out where he goes. Oh, oh my god. Um. But yeah, how do you guys feel where he fits on the big boy scale? That's my current feeling. Is that it's four out of five. After I've looked at everything. I just kind of the only thing that I can really knock against him is, I, and I'm also I'm also a person who doesn't really super care about defensive like measures on a unit. So as long as they can kill pretty good, I'm pretty fine with that. So in my mind, four out of five because again, not Gogeta. Man, I just, I just feel like I'm going to be the guy that's always given fives. I will give Hit a, a flat five, but after the ball thing, I can't unsee it. He's going down to a four. I'm going to give him a four because I think I think he's uh I think he's relevant in the most common or not the most relevant modes, like the hardest modes. I think he's really good. He'll like sell there. Uh, he'll take a ton of damage if he's not positioned properly and stuff like that because he doesn't have a defensive boost. That's the only thing he's missing. But on the surface, I think he's really good. Um. And then the ball thing, and then like the singular muscle, I, I can't unsee that. So. Yeah. <laughs> Hit, don't hate me. He's gonna never get a stun now. Yeah, we'll he's see. never gonna he's stun. Never gonna stun. Every time, like he's, you're just gonna always remember when he doesn't stun. You're just gonna go, damn it, should have given him a five out of five, big boy. Should have gave him a five. Stupid Zen. Go, like five dickhead. videos in a row before he actually decides to stun. Five videos for five votes. There you go. <laughs> Zen, how you feeling? Uh, I think I am going to give him a 3 out of 5 mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. you can't defend a battle kilt and he's a literal dickhead and you can't be a big boy if you're a literal dickhead. You're a mid boy. I guess you have to have <laughs> spiky hair to be a big boy. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> have you seen Broly's muscles? And then Hit just has this little squirtle turtle shell on his chest. It's a good point. It's a good point. You're always thinking outside the box when it comes to the big boy, and that's how it's going to keep this big boy scale super relevant as the <laughs> oh years go God. by. <laughs> so those are the Bad. two units. Just Four to do blood. a quick summary, Krillin got a 2 out of 5, a 3 out of 5, and a 10 out of 5, which averaged to a round to a 4.3 oh, wait, out no, of 5. No. I thought you, wait, didn't you give Krillin a 1? No, he gave it a 3. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then Krillin did average out to a five out of five because that totals fifteen between the three of us. Okay, yeah. my bad. My three. Zed's out here trying to take so, off points. So Krillin, so is, Krillin is, in fact, got ranked higher than it. So Krillin <laughs> is the, our second five out of five big boy joining Gogeta. <laughs> Krillin and Gogeta <laughs> back to back, just the, the fucking the pose. And... <laughs> I'm gonna add both of them to the side art so people know who the five out of five big boys are. <laughs> Um, and then we have Hit, who got a two four out of five big boys and a three out of five big boys. So that's around an average of like a three. Hang on, point... uh, that's uh three point six out of five big boys. All right, which is respectable, I'll say. And there we go; those are the two units. Thank you very much for uh, these two units. For, uh, for... <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to say, what the fuck am I thinking? Me? I'm the You're one who picked them. The episode and we're not done. We're not done. I was going to say thank you, D-Free, for actually bringing in some Dokkan knowledge as opposed to us just <laughs> fucking around for a bit. 
oh no, I tried to take it serious, but now I can't because I'm just gonna keep thinking ball head now. So, <laughs> I mean, that's the this is why people come here for it's for the sometimes serious Dokkan talk and then a lot of ball head <laughs> jokes, a lot of dick oh, jokes. <laughs> All right, and let me quickly find the questions thread. There will be around 10 questions um, this time, because last time we were reading all 20-something questions, and it took us forever, and there are three people here now. So <laughs> yeah, if your question does not get read, it's no disrespect towards you. It's just, hey, maybe next time. But thank you very much for submitting the questions. First question, uh, which is the first one on top, so I'll always read the first person who answers back. It's from Yowie Mom, who's at is at Yowie Mom, and she says, "Why does my brother like dog? Don't Doko go to that Twitter, me? by the way. Don't, do not don't go to that. Do not visit Yowie Mom. <laughs> do not go to that Twitter, especially yes. if you're at work. That happens so much to me. I was like, oh, who's this person? Oh, nope, can't be here. <laughs> nope, gotta get out of here. <laughs> so, nope. so to give some background, this person is literally my sister, and she's asking, why do I like Dokon more than her? And I'll just say, I don't. I like, I like you way more than I like Dokon. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you guys think? Uh, do you think that I like Dokon more than my sister? Uh, it sounds sounds believable to me. I'm with her. <laughs> I don't know if you do, but I don't know if you should. <laughs> I don't think that's a different a different discussion. Fair enough, fair enough. Thank you for the question, <laughs> Yowie Mom. Next question. This is my favorite question. So we're gonna a- we're gonna get- answer this. Wait, are we finally getting a new ep- new episodes of the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, the que- the the answer to the question. The name is now to be released. Thank you very much. No one will call it that but us. But um, yes, we're gonna keep doing them. There's no real answer unless you guys. What do you guys think? Do you think we'll get more episodes of the Modcast later down the road? Oh yeah, definitely. Mm. It depends on how the big boy scale pans out. Oh. If it, if it flares out, then we're in trouble. The goddamn big boy scale. <laughs> Fantastic scale. Like you can't argue with it <laughs> because it's inarguable because <laughs> it's oh, so flexible. <laughs> Next. You heard it here. The big boy scale is hard fact. Krillin is the best unit in the game. <laughs> side by side with Gogeta. <laughs> with Gogeta Blue. Top two unit overall. Oh my god. Krillin. See, if I had both units now, I would to- I didn't. I never pulled Gogeta, but I would totally try and put a team hey, with them together. I'm just saying that that Krillin is on Gogeta's category. So Yeah. Is he? The oh. Movie Heroes, yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm going to let D-Free do it then. I'm a- <laughs> There's your next video idea. <laughs> Show off. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know about all that. I ain't ready. <laughs> you ain't ready for that responsibility. That's nah, fair that, enough. Now nah, that's too much power, man. It is like, <laughs> that's too strong. <laughs> when he t- when he gets that thirty percent up, you're gonna go like, God damn, this is too much damage. Uh, <laughs> next question. Thank you very much. That was from Tcon and Novus, something like that. Sorry if I get your name wrong. Next one comes from <laughs> Naptune, asking the question of when is Unrat playing Fate Go? And I'm going to say thanks to the Fate players. <laughs> never. <laughs> the answer Not is never. Not a chance in hell. <laughs> Not a chance in hell. But let me ask you, D Free. How are? <laughs> have you ever heard of Fate? <laughs> have you ever? Have you ever? Uh, nope. Fate Grand Order. Yeah, I have. I've actually had it uh, installed for a while. I got trash down, uh, trash summon, so I deleted it. Uh, that sounds about right, but I, I'll say every other summon on Faco is a trash summon. <laughs> so you were just yeah. <laughs> that was no, the- I, and I actually didn't just delete it like same day. I actually had it for like a couple months, and got my stuff, and like had like five like other trash summons, and they were never the character either. It was always the other thing you can get. Oh, it's the craft essence, like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that. And I was like, what the hell is this? Why is this a thing? And I just deleted it. It's it's the equivalent to Dragalia's freaking worm print. It's the dumbest shit. Uh, yeah. Yep. Only only way worse because the worm prints in Dragalia are not as good as the craft essences in Fake Go. As someone yeah. who plays both, like craft essences can sometimes be better than entire units. In Dragalia, I have yet to see a single worm print be worth being a five. <laughs> it's the dumbest shit, so I don't Yeah. Fair enough. There's your question. Thank you very much. And here's a legit question from Nathan that asks, what's your personal personal opinions on the GSSR? I personally think it's way overrated and it's find it funny when it's used in Dokkan slash Legends debate. Sure, when LR hunting, it's great, but overall, trash IMO. What 130 totally uses SSR at a 95% rate while a card we want is at 5% overrated IMO? And that is from Nathan. So... Don't- 
uh, hold on. Don't don't both games essentially have the same featured unit rate? Uh, if you if you're counting individual units, Legends is like fractionally higher by like something tiny, like 0.2 percent or something like that. So nothing marginal. Nothing that really matters. No, nothing that is noticeable. Yeah. yeah. So the whole like the thing about GSSR is it's not really something you should really consider because of the fact that more often than not you're going to get an unfeatured unit and then more often than not since the pool is so large and so expansive over three years it's going to be a trash unit mm -hmm. so there, it's not really anything you should even consider in a debate or something like that it's just it's i mean it's cool i mean you no longer get like for example legends doesn't even have guaranteed extremes like that's the dumbest thing i don't know how many times i got full hero summons and i'm like wow that was just total waste you don't even get you don't get enough z, uh, <laughs> of the little damn Z medals to make up for it. So well, those like, are valueless anyway. So they are they are super valueless, right? Yeah, a uh, lot of that might be the most disappointing thing in Legends ever is those fucking medals. Oh yeah, that's why I was like, someone was like, oh yeah, you can finally say. I was like, so, no, you're telling me I still can't spend my Z medals, right? Because I'm not. Because the best not. part is the shop was locked for so long. They were like, look forward to it. You'll get to some souls. I was like, that's awesome. Are they going to put like old sparkings in there? You can max out old guys. And they were yeah. like, nope, here's the extreme souls that were farmable. And here's all the previous seasons of equipment. The, sh the shitty equipment <laughs> from PvP. So, yeah, that, that I mean, like, it shouldn't, the, the GSSR thing is not a big deal. I mean, some people look at it and say, oh, it's great. I don't. Because it I, never really was. I mean, it's nice not getting a, completely bad summon that at least isn't even worth the baba points i guess but otherwise yeah. not the only thing it really f kind of fixed was that feeling of when you would summon and you would get no ssr and then suddenly you would get one ssr and it was like um the original int trunks and you just looked at it and went like i can't believe i got out of all the ssrs yeah. i got this guy it removed that feeling and the only other time it's yeah, yeah. And the only other time it's good though is on non-festival manners because there's actually LR. Yeah. You can you actually have a really good chance at getters because of that. And as the game, as I mentioned earlier, keeps on putting out more, you'll have a better and better chance. So that's the only time it's good, as the guy mentioned. But yeah, yeah, it's it's not like the end all be all. It's not something you should totally like die on a hill for. Where you're like, no, because it has this, then it's like it's so good you should not die on that hill and you should also not die on the hill of like this is also the worst thing to ever have it's more like this is a thing they needed to add but there's still overall problems with the actual like units in there which is we've gone into before i just wish that they removed literal ssrs from the game like they need to clean it up horribly and that's never going to happen so it's just going to get worse over the years <laughs> <laughs> yeah well at least a lot of the non-feature units have been lately but mm -hmm. it doesn't it doesn't do anything about the old units you just need to get the old units out of the freaking pool because they're there and they they overwhelm it because of the fact that so many of them are useless now mm. yep yeah. Yeah. and it's not it, it's and also straight up most of them aren't even worth bobbying anymore there's nothing in the baba shot that, that yeah. i legit well, want the only thing that can save those units is rebirth slash uh extreme zero so yeah. if they get an extreme Z awaken, if they already have a rebirth, that'll make them usable. But other than that, there's no point getting them. Which I do like that Dokkan does that. I mean, they try to make older units relevant by giving them easy A's and rebirths. <clears throat> yeah, easy A's have been better than enough. rebirths. I I would say in terms of like what was better to making units good, easy A's have been better than um, rebirths. It also does cause a weird thing of like now Inch and Emba is the good one and STR is not. <laughs> So. Yeah, and it's going to happen again with STR Gogeta. When STR Gogeta gets his ZA in like less than a week now, he is going to be way better than the end Gogeta, which is... I'm going to laugh if they if they full power Frieza him, and it's like now he gets a flat 10,000. <laughs> 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 would kill me. It would. Oh, man. You know what would be good, yeah, though? Yeah, that would be horrendous. What if they brought back the... Um the rainbow meta this is actually what they've been building towards and now the rainbow meta is back and now it's you only have str gogeta as the lead and then you put whoever the hell you want on the team <laughs> oh so he, his leader skill is going to become like uh, 150 yeah. percent to all types yeah yeah it'd have to be one. that's crazy <laughs> it'd be hilarious you you already know he, he's gonna be so good though because of the fact that the engine now just dominates the str one much better compared so like str 
Vegeta. I think somebody calculated like a year ago that they needed like a percent passive boost to be better than the. So it's like, yeah, he's gonna be really good. So that easy A's are amazing for yeah. good units anyway. They've so far have done pretty good with easy A's, which is better than what they did with rebirths. Because as we said, when rebirths first debuted, it started with two dead on arrival units, and Piccolo got a really good buff. <laughs> That's basically yep. the rebirth experience. And you could literally go back to actual episodes of the podcast where Zen is saying the exact thing of like, I thought rebirths were supposed to be good. <laughs> and the answer is <laughs> they're not. Yeah, they're they're really hit or miss. So it just depends on the unit. Like, we you know, I talked about Chompa earlier. Uh, initially, his passive was just medium chance to get a 200% boost, which is like whatever. He didn't necessarily get a rebirth because he gets fierce battle, right? But he's got an awakening recently um because he wakens through the hit event and now his passive is three key 40 percent to universe six as well that's amazing right yeah that's really good uh, that, that's amazing so like that type of stuff is good <clears throat> but like sometimes they have really really crappy rebirths especially early on like, with that first batch that like, AGL goku that gets like seven key and that's all they get yeah he's he's a really dumb unit like it was weirdly designed he's like I, if i recall correctly he was designed to be shot like to win like it's it's dumb like, all those units are kind of eh. Like, the Goten, I mean, excuse me, the Gohan and the Trunks, the Int ones, whatever. Then there's that Goku that had Immense, that tech one, and he ne- he literally did nothing but stay at support. You know? It's just, that type of stuff is dumb. Yeah. Especially as the game ages. Yeah, and that's something that we're going to keep going. We're going to deal with this again in, like, a year when we're going to have to have another form of, like, like, just updating units. But we'll see. Thank you for the question once again. Yeah. Uh, what was it? I'm sorry, I lost you. Nathan, there you go. Thank you very much, Nathan. Uh, next question, and I think this is very good because we have both of you on here. It, this is from, uh, f- I'm going to say it's it's like fact, but with a U, so it's Faku. And he asks, is the Zenrado nickname Luck Cannon? Um, I'm asking, I'm glad D Free is here because D Free is a man who has, has actual video evidence of him going, I don't need Zenrado Luck, and then pulling an LR right after he said it. <laughs> 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 yeah i pulled a freaking goku at frieza i was like oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right cool oh man i will yeah, say you no. don't need it no no you don't need it zenra what do you think what do you it's feel it's 100 percent canon 100 percent canon <laughs> you it's the whole sweet you saw that it, it's right there yeah, I did. Is uh, Natal the one that did the video? Yeah, he did the video to see what happened, and he got an LR. <laughs> <laughs> and oh since then, God. your name has basically escaped you. <laughs> yeah, it's like not even mine anymore. There's all these people I've never seen or talked to on YouTube that are like, trying out Nanogenics' Zenrado name trick. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, great. Okay. <laughs> cool. I hope one day that, because, uh, uh, you you have started doing YouTube uh, videos again. I hope someone goes like, "Oh man, uh, Zenrado!" Someone started a YouTube account based off of the trick Nanogenic <laughs> show. <laughs> Someone's gonna accuse me of stealing the name from the trick. Exactly. Oh my god. And then it's gonna be, then you're gonna have to have him on and then explain everything, and then they'll go, "I can't believe you forced Nanogenics to." <laughs> 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 He's trying to rewrite history now. Oh man. Uh, thank you for the question, Faku. I hope that answers the question. It is both canon and not canon at the same time. Like GT. All right. Next question. This one comes from Giovanni. And he asked, if you could add a new category, what would it be? Also a leader to said category. I would want a Dragon Ball like category. And I know that this is sad because it will never happen. But I would want one that's not in the world tournament, and this would be the start of like it would debut, and then there would be like five other good Dragon Ball units in the banner as well. So, <laughs> so it would debut, and then the whole team would come out. Yes, oh, and man. and if and then it's like it was like when the Aureli banner first showed up. So when you pull on it, you are guaranteed the best SS- banner ever. 
Yes, it is the best banner ever. And you're guaranteed one of the featured units in there, no matter what. So as long as you keep keep pulling, you will eventually... It would be the nicest Dragon... Out of four, disrespecting Dragon Ball and making them live in the World Tournament Ghetto, I think it deserves a good banner like that. They would also need to retroactively add uh, a Rayleigh to Dragon Ball, because I don't like the fact that a Rayleigh does not have the Dragon Ball link. She doesn't need it, but she should have it. Really, he's also not in the. Uh, I mean, she's not a direct android, but I mean, come on, now. she yep. pretty much is. Yeah, she's literally a mechanical being. If um, Android sixteen yeah. can join them, then <laughs> why not the literal girl? Who's why I can't? Her? <laughs> For real, exactly. If if, if sixteen could be in exactly, if sixteen is in it, then Aureli should be in it. But that's how I feel. Uh. What do you guys what do you guys think? I want a big boy category that is populated solely for big boys. And the buffs that I don't know how high you rank them. <laughs> oh my. So it's a tiered <laughs> category. So like Gogeta gets like four key and two hundred percent to all stats, but then uh like LR Trunks gets shit. He gets like thirty percent stats. <laughs> so does that mean people who exist on like the negative scale get like actually debuffs to the team if they're on it? They get worse. Yeah, like, the, it's like the Yamcha that weakens the team when he's on it. That's that's what they do. All right, I can respect that. Uh, Day three. What do you feel? Second that notion. Second that notion. <laughs> Second it. All right, then. That sounds good to me. Thank you for the question, Giovanni. Uh, let me see. And the next question... Oh. Oh, shit. Did you guys hear that? Hey, watch your profanity. <laughs> but did you hear... <laughs> did you hear that? No, I didn't hear it. Don't? No? Because it sounds like no. it's... Oh, really? Watch time! <laughs> 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 that thing is trailer. <laughs> 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 the best thing is that there's two intros to a Rayleigh watch, by the way. <laughs> there's me singing it. Oh my god. So for the update for everyone who is out there wondering, is a Rayleigh in Dokkan? Is she showing up again? It is not counting the event. Her banner is still not here. Thank you everyone for another exciting update to a Rayleigh watch. We now return to you to our to the next question. All right, then. Let's see now. Uh, well, that next was question. informative. <laughs> I don't know, man. That guy keeps bring, like, cuss, bringing in here, like, cutting, like, finding where I record and then just showing up and giving oh us updates. God. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> uh, this one comes from Doodle. Ver <laughs> the main name is Doodle, but their ad is Baku Fucker. <laughs> it's oh. what? Like Bakugo <laughs> and their main art is Uraraka. <laughs> oh. And they're asking <laughs> what are the Dokkan best units you'd like to see for 2019? Uh well hits off the bucket list. Well yeah, he is coming in Japan in 2019. <laughs> well, I mean sure, but yeah. No cop out answers. Um, no, she's not an option because we just went through a whole, whole segment. Yeah, she's not. <laughs> uh, uh, Dokkan Fest. Let's go, with Dokkan Fest, Garlic Jr. All right, we we're just talking about that because and then his super, always is it, it's, a, it's an RNG roll, and if you fail the roll, he opens the dead zone and he dies. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be pretty good. It'd be the ultimate both uh, asset and detriment in the Dokkan world. Oh, man. The ultimate uh, roulette wheel. The silver bullet. Do it. Do it. Totally would. Yeah, he'd be like Devil Man, where he'll either he'll one-hit kill sometimes, oh, but then when he doesn't, he gets sucked into the dead zone, and he gets killed. <laughs> he can't use it anymore. Oh, my God. I think, you know, if we're going to go on the same wheel, I'm just going to say the giant brain in a jar, that one. The Doctor Willow. Doctor Willow. Yeah, I want I want the brain in the jar. 
I don't want him in his like mech suit. I want the literal brain in the jar. The mech suit would be a separate unit <laughs> that would also uh, have a chance to get in there. But I'll go with him. It's like there's not a lot of units left because there's not like what's we're going to get Broly and Gogeta because they're already here. So what what's next on the horizon? It's dudes who have not yet shown up. And it really is a lot of like obscure movie villains. Even Lord Slug eventually got a unit, so who knows? What do you feel, Zen? I want uh, the Vegeta from the He Blows Up the Bug Planet with his JoJo's Bizarre Adventure colors. <laughs> That's oh, what I want. The red hair? Yeah, with the red hair and like the funky looking armor that does not look right at all. Yeah. That's the planet Arlie of Vegeta. You know how expensive that Funko Pop is? That thing is <laughs> I can only imagine. So expensive. <laughs> Oh, that's the only reason I know too. It's freaking <laughs> so damn expensive. <laughs> damn. All right, thank you once again, Baku fucker, for that informative question. <laughs> keep on, be keeping on. And next one we come from is from Artificial One. This is a very simple question. It is: If it was possible, would Zen do a stream for JoJo Eyes of Heaven? Only you can answer this question, Zen. Absolutely, I just don't own the game because everyone always tells me, "Hey, man, this shit is fifteen dollars. You should get it right now." And I'm like, "Oh, sick! I'll do that when I get home." And then I forget, and then like two days later, I'm like, "Fuck!" And I run on really fast, and it's back to sixty dollars again. So, oh, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, it's say... happened like three times. Fifteen dollars is a pretty good amount for those games. Uh, personally, I'm not for... spending sixty dollars on it. I'll tell you that shit. No, sixty dollars is way too much to ask, even if you are a JoJo fan. It's more like, eh, I don't know if I'll like this or not, so 15 sounds good enough. Yeah, I would happily get it for $15. I just keep missing it. There you go. Uh, D3, what do you feel about Zen <laughs> streaming some JoJo Eyes of Heaven? All right, good answer. Thank you, D3. <laughs> he exactly should have right. just said no. I don't think <laughs> The answer is no. Nope. Long that's it. That's it. No, no, that was the answer. This pause. <laughs> that's the answer all right <laughs> thank you very much and the final question is uh this is from connor and he asks if you would if you could change anything about the actual gameplay aspects of dokkan i.e bubble tapping what would you change um the i don't know if this is a hundred percent change but i would just add an auto button auto would be nice yeah I or feel skip tickets either one yeah, either one. It's that's not like a gameplay change, but that's more of a gameplay addition. It's like a quality of life thing. Yeah. Yeah, I th I think with their current trend, they might wind up actually doing some one of those two things sooner than later. Because having to play through all those stages over and over, you have to play like when you get a new unit like eleven times. It's it's doing. And that's only if you get that unit. If you get the mm -hmm. ones that Dokkan from his event, it's like twenty something times. Oh. Yeah. Well, it's an, it's another five or so for them. Like it, for example, Hit, like he came out with a whole bunch of new units. Botamageta, the Champa Awakening. You have to play that. <laughs> so that's doing a bit. Yeah. Uh, I think skip tickets are more likely than auto, though. Something like that. I would that. rather have skip tickets than auto. Yeah. yeah. Just because I feel like I don't trust the Dokkan AI to know the best move to do <laughs> when it comes to. Hey, you know what? I I would definitely not trust Dokkan's AI because you can't even trust Legends AI. It's horrendously bad. That's true. It's true. So <laughs> the, the the Dragalia AI has actually gotten better over time. They've gotten Yeah, to the point. it did. At, at first they wouldn't even use skills, but now they use skills. The the so. only the only thing they won't do is to dodge fire. They will still run straight into fire if it's in front of them. <laughs> <laughs> I once watched my Lily Lily get up five times and run into fire over and over and over again until I told her oh to dodge. God. And then her AI friends would dodge the fire, but she wouldn't. <laughs> It was the most annoying thing in the world. That's crazy. Yeah, the AI used to be so bad, though. So it's come a long way. Yeah, they've definitely improved the uh, AI patterns of it. Now I can trust it to like go like, okay, I'm pretty sure you can beat this boss without me doing anything. So yeah, put it aside, be done with it. <sighs> like anything actual game. You know what? This is actually a gameplay change. I think it would be nice if I could actually determine when my units show up. So I could have an actual good rotation. I think that would probably break the game in the sense of like, well, if it's not RNG, I don't have to um, 
do everything else but then you could have more bosses that literally like fuck up with the rotation and stuff that do stuff like um what is it omega shenron that like mm-hmm. would lock you it's t- take your units in place i feel like that would be less annoying if you could already like put your units where you wanted them to be and then you could add units that's like they switch it before the turn starts or something like that like something that would be different it'd be like a different level of rng compared to the current rng that we currently face yeah that's possible that'd be cool yeah it'd be I, a lot of- i know uh, mm-hmm. it's just more or less playing the stages a bunch of times it's, it gets redundant really fast so yeah It's the same thing with any of these games. Like, I don't really want to play the stage a bunch of times. So I just skip everything, if possible. While we're on the topic of this, I'm going to bring this up. Thank you. That was our last question. Defrey, have you played any other Dragalia Lost New Year's event? Oh, yeah. All of it. Have you been dealing with the same thing I've been dealing with, which is a bunch of people just giving up on the raid boss when the drops Uh, happen? No, I haven't. Only on the extra. So I've literally like when I was playing the regular raid boss, someone I would I would it was five different people in a row. Every single host would drop the second we got the first. Like we hit the basket once, and they were like, "Oh, oh, the dro- the drop is in here. I'm just gonna give up." And I was kicked back, and I felt like it was the most frustrating thing in the fucking world. I could what not trying to get the drop specifically. I think like... they were trying to get like the summon tickets or the ignot, something like that. They're trying to get something in there, but literally the second the box opens, you can check what it drops. So they check the drop rates, and then when it's not what they want, they automatically give up. Wow, that's yeah. I haven't, I haven't experienced that. It is terrible. It is the most frustrating fucking thing in the world, and it's proof why we can't have nice things because it's just people constantly trying to get like a one percent drop. And it's after you've already beat the boss, yeah. No, it's like we're beating the boss. So in the middle of the boss fight, they go, "Nah, we're giving up. There's no point in us no. continuing." And it's like no. I. I have to literally host my own games if I want to prove to the fact that, like, okay, I want to actually kill this thing. Because if you host yeah, it, then... that's crazy. Yeah. It's not a very good implementation. I was so I was extremely angry about that. So, good job, uh, Dragalia Lost fan base, for completely shitting all over what was supposed to be a fantastic <laughs> celebration. I'm switching back to uh, a gameplay update that we would make because I didn't give mine and I wanted to do it because I kind of like it. It would never happen because it's too extensive of an overhaul. But I think everybody should have 12 and 24 key super attacks. I think that would make it so much less monotonous to play. Oh, like non-LR cards? Yeah, everybody. Because one, it sucks watching the same goddamn flash animation over and over again. Even when they look good. Like the Gogeta one looks so good. But when you've watched it 950 times because it plays every single time Gogeta takes a turn, <laughs> it's so boring after a while. So, like, if you just give everyone a 12 and a 24, even the old guys, one, it fixes the fact that you don't really have to play the game because everyone starts with, like, 11 key now. Two, you don't have to watch the same goddamn animation over and over again, and it might actually be fun. Like, I like watching Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks because he has three different animations, so it's fun to try to get the one that you want. Mm. then you just everyone else is just like oh good he spawned with 12 key now i can watch him do some flips and explode something again <laughs> yeah that's true it's way easy now uh, unless you're an lr you still kind of struggle but far long gone are the days where you didn't have these key leaders and you remember when, when super saiyan god and kaioken goku first came out everyone was like oh my god they yeah. start with six key <laughs> <laughs> Now it feels like it's just key on key on key on key. Pretty yeah, much. I know it is. You, there's more that you can do with. And there are units that explicitly have a lot of key links, like SS4 Gogeta. He's got, he's got nothing but key links and Fierce Battle and Super Saiyan. That's like it. Dokkan so, like, has actually followed the same pathway as like Dragon Ball, where Dragon Ball in the beginning was like Goku was like, oh, no. this Kamehameha took a lot of energy out of me. It's going to take me a while to use key again. And then now we're at the point where it's currently like um, <laughs> end game uh, DBZ, where like everyone is just straight up using key for everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's pretty true. And soon we're going to get to. Uh, the super version where that's when everything's going to be fucked. That's when they're going to introduce LRs with 36 key. That's the next <laughs> level. I swear it. All right, then. That's everything. 
Thank you, everyone who brought, brought who gave us a question. For other ones who did not get their answer question, we might answer it again. But chances are, you could just ask their it. Their answer question. Yes, answered the question. I'm. I can't talk, Will. You know this. You you know <laughs> this, and yet you insult me for it every single time. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> and in front of D Free, our guest, you could not ask. <laughs> I'm just saying that you've pronounced Pycon's name Pecan every single time I've ever spoken to you. And it's been years, and I've corrected you every time for oh two God. years, and you, you still do it. Do you see what I've been dealing with, Dayfrey? For <laughs> since the since the Reddit days, since he forgot to put me in into the mod introduction video, Zedron <laughs> has been trying to break me. <laughs> this man for two straight. We'll we'll you'll be talking about a unit, and you'll. Make a joke and be like, "Oh yeah, like optimal, like pecan, like fucking pecan, <laughs> optimal <laughs> pecan." That's his name. <laughs> fucking. At, at least I spell it right. Pecan. <laughs> that's something. <laughs> and it's funny because that's not even like a, something where it's only written down. They pronounce it in the anime all the. Yeah, I know. Work. You you have no defense for that. Mm. <laughs> I don't have, I can't defend myself from here, so obviously it's time to end this show. I want to thank D Free for joining us, for weighing in on the important Dokkan issues of how big these boys are. Thanks to him, we have our second five out of five big boy, which Pause. is always. <laughs> which is, how big these boys are. How big Wait, these what? boys are. <laughs> We ask ourselves, we ask ourselves the question every single time: How big are these boys? And uh, we do. And Mai is also on the big boy scale because she is with LR. Sounds Trunks. like we need an adult. Yeah, she is in fact on the big boy scale. She's low on it though. She's not very. Yeah, well, that's because you know it's part of LR trunk. Someone has actually been saying that we need to create like a like a waifu scale, and I feel like that we don't. There's no reason to differentiate. But there'd be like four units on. Yeah, and then we get the, weird because Dragon the Dokkan doesn't have waifus. No, it got yeah, Kefla. That's like yeah, that's the only one. That'd be the only yeah. one on the list. Kefla. Unless you're somebody that likes Berserk Kale. <laughs> no. <laughs> Berserk Kale would be up there on the big boy scale. <laughs> Definite big boy. The biggest. The... <laughs> so we're we just gonna give a definitive, just like five out of five for Kale as well, if we could uh, just do this. <laughs> <laughs> so that our five out of five big boys are now Gogeta, Killin, Ed, Kale, and Berserk. Ed, Berserk, Kale. <laughs> oh, man. And... <laughs> All right, then. Once again, thank you for joining us, Steve Free, and thank you, Zenrod, for always being here. I want to say thank you to me for <laughs> dealing with all of you. <laughs> and we'll see you guys no next next episode don't be a stranger to you for even though it feels like uh this would <laughs> i'm always surprised when you end an episode and you're still willing to come back <laughs> <laughs> oh man i don't mind it's just this time i got scarred man so i don't know i got scarred by the hit ball thing yeah hits ruined forever now <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna wake i was up. literally gonna well, now i'm gonna think <laughs> gonna wake up in the middle of the night sweating and you're just gonna have a picture of hit every time he closes his eyes all he sees is hit's head from the guy you're gonna open up your your uh your what the medicine cabinet and then when you close it it's gonna be that fucking str hit that's yelling that looks full-on dick oh my God. looking back at you all right i'm ending the shit show goodbye everyone